this series we're going to be using a drawing grid. This will help me to show you how to get the shapes into proportion and positioned well inside your picture area. We will need to draw out our grid like this. 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres and then draw two horizontal lines this way and two vertical lines this way. Each of these areas here should be four centimetres by four centimetres each. Of course you could draw your grid a lot larger if you want your drawing to be larger but I think it's quite fun to work on a small scale especially when you're starting out. It's a good idea to use cheap copy paper to do this stage so that you feel less worried about doing it perfectly and you can just enjoy the sketching. Once you've drawn your grid, you can then either draw it each time that you're going to do a new piece of artwork or you can photocopy it several times so you've got lots of grids ready for each drawing that we do. In this project we're going to learn how to draw a shell and paint it but first we'll start with a fresh drawing grid and I'll show you how to go from a basic circle into the shell shape. So when we start to draw something it's um, quite normal to focus on the detail of things before looking at the overall shape and sometimes that sends us off on the wrong pathway. So in this particular project, we might start looking at the lines that are in the centre there or maybe the curvy outside line. But what we need to do first in order to um, get a really well proportioned shape going is to think about what geometric shape can we associate with that object. So, of course, it's very round mostly. We've got areas there that could be the bottom half of a square. I'm going to concentrate on the circular um, structure of it first for this drawing. So let's start by drawing a basic circle and filling up our grid with that shape. So I'm going to start at the top here, just do a slight curve in that middle box at the top there. Quite close to the edge but not touching the edge. And then I want to come around to about here. So it's a good idea to maybe put yourself like a little dot there and then join that, sh that line up with that one using a curve. So you might need to do several lines to get that right. And then if you go to the other side of the grid and put another dot that's of an equal distance away from the side to that one, um, you can do the same and just run a line round to there and then we can put another dot about there and there so it's kind of the same as the one above and just make a curved line to join those two again we're kind of bowing out a little bit but we're not going right to the edge of the page and the same way that one there and then if we come down to this bottom section here and do the same again so it's putting a couple of dots about the same distance from there as they are from here roughly and then you can join up those two with a curve and then go to this side join up those two and then all you've got to do is join those two at the bottom so you've got you can see that you've got quite a sort of balanced shape there. It's not a perfect circle. If you wanted a perfect circle, we'd just draw around something, which obviously you could do if you're on the right size thing. But that's a good way to sort of practice your drawing skills and control by um, using those pointers there. So let's have a, another look at the shell shape. We can see that at the bottom here, it's narrower although that bottom edge does sit on our curve that we've drawn and then um, the line goes in and out again to the side. So let's try that first to get that main shape. So if we take our pencil to this bottom curve here, 
and then curve in slightly and out again to that point there. And then curve in and out there. you're happy with that shape then we can remove these, oops, these outside lines from our circle that we drew earlier we don't need those anymore and this side as well already got quite a nice shell shape there. So the next part I want to draw are these um, little flat pieces that come here. So let's find a point along that line about there and just bring it down and across to making like almost a little triangle shape there and then try and do it in exactly the same place on the other side. So it helps you, you can take a soft line just across, pick that one up. And then lose a guideline in the middle. And I think that one of mine is slightly bigger, so let me just adjust that. Play around with your drawing until you feel comfortable um, with the, the symmetry of it. And then we can start to think about these um, lines that are on the shell. So let's take um, one from the centre move that out of the way for a moment and just very lightly draw a line down the middle there just from one edge of your shape to the other you notice how I've just felt my way with lots of small marks there to try and get a fairly straight shape straight line should I say and then one coming down here And then one coming down here. So these lines converge and meet each other in this much narrower gap between each of those lines than there is at the top. So they're kind of fanning out in this way. So if we look at this, the size of the gaps between those lines there um, it might help us to make some dots along the edge of our shell that's about the same distance round here and here and then in the same way draw some lines up to meet those dots We've got one dot there and one dot there, still on that line from before. So let's use that dot to give us another starting point for this section. And this one. Now the next part is a little bit different because the shell changes um, in this area down here. So let's put another little dot on the side and one on that side. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow this line 
we drew earlier and we're going to take it up to meet that dot and the same on the other side so run your pencil along that line follow up there and up to meet your dot out there then we're going to put another dot just here and one just here and this one is going to come in at a slightly different angle so it's going to be the same angle that this line is here it's almost going to tuck just underneath that line and the same with this one so think about the, the angle of that line that you drew there try and keep it parallel as you come down so you've got like a little joining place here and here it's looking much more like a shell now so all we've got to do to finish this off now is to make some nice curvy lines on the edge so the scalloped edge of the shell so we can accentuate that using the dots we've already given ourselves and because we've used the grid we know that our shell is nice and symmetrical so in other words it's the same on this side as it is on this side and just to finish that off then we can just remove any lines that we don't really need so lots of our original circle that we drew can now be just rubbed away just so we're really clear about which parts of the drawing we're going to keep these things up Oops. and I'm going to just reinforce the lines that I want to keep I feel quite happy and confident with my shell shape. So here you will see that I'm using my light box in order to transfer my shell drawing onto some art paper. So I'm going to um, paint this in watercolours eventually. So I'm using some watercolour paper and you can see how the light box will help me to transfer my drawing through to the paper. So, um, as I always say, you can either use tracing paper to trace that down onto there, or um, if you have a light box to do this method, or you can actually um, use a window and tape your drawing onto the window, and then that should cast enough light so that you can see through onto your art paper. this is always the nice easy part as you've done all the working out on your grid let's start by just drawing the outline first I tend to do that a lot just catch that little button with my hand that switches it off I'm drawing all around the outside, take that shape down,
So now our shell is starting to look quite good. I just want to add a couple more details that are going to help us when we're painting it. From that central line here, come up about just before halfway, not, not on the halfway mark, but just before there, just put a little dot there. And then up to just over halfway between that dot on the top, put another dot there. So they're going to be a couple of guides for us. And I just want to add a curve onto the shell. It's going to make part of the pattern when we paint it. So let's start from this point here where these lines intersect and just draw a curve that comes up and round very, very lightly. Don't draw too heavily here because we don't really want that line to be visible when we paint it to meet that dot there. And then in the same way, back round the other side to there. And then when you've done that, just add another line that's just slightly above it. So just follow that your first one as a guide and bring that round to that side. And then we want another line coming to start this time from that dot if you want to. And just draw a nice curvy line very lightly all the way around to there and then the same way on that side all the way out to there so that's sort of some patterns that you might recognize when you're looking at shells i'm just gonna just lightly rub away those dots that we put there just because when we paint it i don't want Big dots showing. So just join those up. And then we're ready to get painting. So now we come to the fun part of painting our shell. And here you can see some of the materials that I've used to give this a go. Um, I will save um, small pieces of my art paper or watercolour paper. To do some trials with before I start. So here you can see how I've um, chosen some colours that mix nicely together, mainly pinks and yellows, and just tried them out in different ways to see what kind of results I get. And the colours that I'm most interested in are really in this section here for the shell, so they're quite nice and pastel and pale. Don't want to go too dark. Um, and I think they'll be quite a nice combination to use. So that's a good rule of thumb is always do a little bit of testing first. Um, so the colours that I'm using are a lemon yellow. So again, I'm using my watercolour inks, but you can use regular watercolour for this as well. Carmine, which is a very pinky red, more than an orangey red. It's very sort of um, pink based. Um, I've got my white here, which is the thicker um, consistency than the other paints that we use and if you've got some white acrylic or white watercolour that'll do the job and this one is just a very nice pale but warm grey I'm going to use for just creating a few shadows uh, I've got my palette for mixing there and here you can see where I was trying out the colours how beautifully they go together um selection of brushes and i'm also going to use some salt to get some texture and that is just regular um this is the sort of quite chunky um rock salt but you can use ordinary table salt that will be fine as well make sure that you've got a piece of tissue paper handy kitchen roll and your drawing that you did earlier so the first thing that I've actually done here is to use my soft putty rubber just to very, very lightly rub over the lines that I've got inside my shell. I don't want to get rid of them completely. I still want to see them there because that's the drawing that I need. But I don't want them to be too dominant because we're going to be putting some delicate paint in that area. So just sort of lightly rub away 
some of the lines um, so that they're still visible but they are much much paler so I've got my palette ready if you don't have a palette like this you could just use um, a dinner plate white dinner plate would be just as good and I'm putting out the carmine which is the pinky red and the lemon yellow so I'm going to put that there they will start swimming together straight away but that's fine I'm just leave them in there for a moment because we are going to first of all just wet the surface of the shell so when you create a wet surface in your image just make sure that the the water doesn't go outside of the area that you want the paint to go because the paint will go wherever that water is, that water puddle. So I'm using quite a um, large brush to do this. And it's just clear water. So we go right up to the edges there. I'm just creating a damp area. For my paint to float about in. If you find it difficult to see where where the water has actually gone on the surface, um, if you just tilt your head so that you're looking at the paper from a different angle, you should be able to see where it's shiny and where it isn't shiny. Let me tell you which bits you painted. I haven't missed anywhere. Okay. So when we mix this, these two colours together, they do make a really nice um, kind of salmon pink colour. So just try swirling them around a little bit. Try and keep some of the paint so that it's just um, yellow on its own and pink on its own. And I don't want this to be too strong in colour, so you can see it as it hits the surface of the paper and finds the water already on there. That helps to keep it nice and pale anyway, because it's kind of diluting that colour as you're putting it on. So try and make some areas a bit, a bit more yellowy and some a bit more pinky. So I want to use some of the yellow on its own in there, that's nice. Just variegate the colour. We don't want is one even colour, we want it to be kind of mottled and changing.
colours, you can maybe drop some colour in there if you feel that you want it to be a bit stronger. Watercolour always dries lighter than when you put it on anyway, so it would be a bit bold. A bit of fun splashing those colours around. Right now, whilst that's wet, we're going to quickly grab our salt. So it's a good idea to just have this ready and sprinkle over the top. And what the salt is going to do is to really make um, some different texture marks on the surface but you have to sprinkle it on and then really leave it to dry for that to happen um, you can see how the salt is kind of sucking up some of the paint color to itself and it will sort of bleach out some of the areas on the surface and just create a really nice texture there but you do have to just let that dry so the best thing to do is just Leave it for a few minutes to settle down and then put a very gentle hair dryer just over the top. And once that's dry, and it's got to be really dry, then you can brush away the salt to see what kind of effects that you've been left with. Once your painting has dried and you've brushed away the salt off the surface, you should be able to see some really lovely um, natural patterns have occurred on the surface. So it's going to make your shell look really pretty. So if you remember when we were drawing the shell, we put some extra curves on the surface here and here, just lightly in pencil. Hopefully you can still see that part of your drawing underneath your painting. Um, and what we're going to do is to um, now paint in that, that part of the pattern. So I'm going to use um, some of the same colour that we used earlier. So this is really just a very sort of pale orangey mix. You don't have to go too dark. And I'm just going to paint in where those lines were. So it's just like a stripe of colour really that curves up and round. Don't go too dark with this, it will stand out against what you've already got there. You don't want to go too dark. And again, paint on your brush you should be able to do that in one or two strokes And then we're going to let that dry. So the next thing that I want to do is to create, um, to put those lines back in. Um, and I want to kind of create a little bit of shadow to show that. So I'm going to use this very pale grey. It's too dark. Just want to suggest those shadows. So I'm going to go back to finding these lines that we drew that kind of fan out and just literally add a line of grey next to each one. 
it's very subtle we don't want it to stand out too much against our other colors that we've got Created some really subtle shadows there. Now I'm going to go back to a little bit of drawing for a moment because I just want to re establish the shape of the shell as we had it before and tidy up some of these edges. So I'm going to go around the outline only of the shell and not these inside bits. I'm going to leave those nice and soft. So let's just follow up on shape that we originally made. You can use pen or pencil for this. Just give it a nice bold outline. giving us our shape back and we just want a little bit of background to that so let's just do some small pebbles small pebble shapes remember different sizes 
a pebble and some are just tucked just underneath the shell. And you can just do a few in each corner. I'm just suggesting a few um, pebbles and things there and we can paint those in you could either leave them just as the drawing like that or if you want to you can paint them in I think I'm just going to pop those in with a little bit of that gray that we used for the shadow in this corner here. And then there's one last thing that I'd like to do to finish off to make this shell look a bit shiny I'm going to use um, some of my white ink here it's almost as much thicker than the other colours And I'm just going to add a few marks here and there on the shell to make it look shiny. So this is what we call highlights. So you might want to just watch where I put these first before you do yours. So I'm looking for edges where I think the shell might be catching the light. So I'm going to go for these edges here. And also down here. So when you're doing highlights, you can use lines or you can use dots to show the surface is shiny and the light is shining on it so it's quite a good effect makes it look a little bit more 
three dimensional and, and less flat. And I think that's all we need for the highlights. Um, I'll probably put a few more on this side than I have on that side because I feel like the light is coming from that side, that direction. And that's all we need to do for our lovely shell. Thank you for painting along with me today. I hope you enjoyed creating your shell. And just remember you can try it in all different colours. See you next time.